thank you all for coming to this meeting tonight on the Historic Buildings Preservation Plan. Uh, tonight we're going to try to discuss um, North Hadley Village Hall and the Senior Center, and to most of us it's known as the Hooker School. We've had two uh, plans put before us. One was from uh, Old Mohawk and Masonry and Historic Restoration Corp Incorporated. They had a they had a presentation in here a couple of months ago, and we had one here from the from uh, the name of this place, Drummy Rosen Anderson Incorporated Architects. The one from Old Mohawk deals with restoration of the old building itself, mostly the exterior, uh, roof, clapboards, ex uh, steps, things of that nature. And I'll read a little assessment here from the old Mohawk plant. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. North Hadley Village Hall. The present condition of North Hadley Hall is primarily a result of lack of maintenance and inappropriate repairs. However, the problems look worse than they are. Much of the original fabric of the exterior is in fair to good condition considering its age. Most deterioration is a result of water infiltration caused by a poor roof system, failed paint, and improper drainage around the perimeter of the building. The structure is made from old growth wood, and many of the building's components have held up well against water and sun damage. North Hadley Village Hall is a wonderful example of handcrafted wood structure, and stopping the deterioration now will allow North Hadley Village Hall to last another 150 years. Critical to the plan is the replacement of the existing roof system and the addition of new gutters to control the roof runoff that is destroying the exterior of the building. I also believe, I think this building was built in 1864. And uh, summary of cost estimates to repair part of this building. Estimates of cost assume that all work performed at prevailing wage rates in compliance with the Davis-Bacon Act and state regulations. Prices include the costs associated with actions necessary to perform the itemized tasks, but does not include a general contractor's fee for project management or the cost of an architect and or engineer's, engineer's specifications, plans, and or stamp drawings. These figures are variable and can range from as low as 10% to as high as 40% and include markup for overhead, profit, bonding, and the restricted payment terms associated with certified payroll, also known as prevailing wage or wage work. Okay, this is what they suggest to do. Foundation work, $41,000. Clapboard replacement, $9,408. All roof systems, $135,697. A gutter system, $21,230. Windows, $34,570. Storm windows, $10,500. Chimney work, $9,400. Cupola, $10,752. Carpentry, $22,656. Paint, $144,875. Contingency, $44,008 for a total of $484,096. And with this preservation plan here, it does not address any wiring, any heat, or any plumbing, or anything in the interior. Uh, so, number six, hold on now. Here. You want it? It's right here. I was going to start here. Uh, now we go to the Drumney Roseanne Anderson Incorporated Architects, and I can cut to the chase here a little bit. They have recommendations and the description of options explored. Let me see here. One of the problems, of course, with uh, North Hadley Hall is park and rec. If what do we do with park and rec? And there's several options in this one. It's uh, no change, repair existing North Hadley Village Hall, or relocate to the senior center. And to the North Hadley Firehouse, no change, repair existing North Hadley Village Hall, or a new building on site. Let me see where I go over here. I don't know. Uh, this organization, 
thinks it's a good idea to reorganize this particular building and add park and rec. Uh, this approach is similar to option one, but with added benefits of introducing park and rec to the building here, making it much more active building for all generations. Their estimated cost is to put an addition on this building. We're going to show plans here later. $6,739,876. Um, another one here, Park and Rec Functions, it says relocate to the senior center. Unlike the options listed, which we'll get into later, uh, create spaces within the building for the use. That means, uh, I think, using the building that you have, but moving things around, and that's for $2 million. And there are also their option here is to sell North Hadley Hall. This is a very big plan, John. Or else should I go here? Uh, <laughs> is there an estimate of what the sale of North Hadley Hall might bring to the town? No, that I don't see. John, <laughs> yeah? not not at this time. I don't believe. You have something here, John? Do you know what uh, the, the by, by law the minimum price would be set by the assessed value? And I think the assessed value is something like two hundred and seventy thousand dollars for that the village hall. So that would be the minimum minimum price. You want to try something here, John? Uh, Keep going. Uh, yeah, I. I uh, here. Is, uh, we can open it up to questions as we go along. I think uh, that's that's what we're all here for. I, we kind of hear want to hear what you people have for thoughts on these buildings, on the senior center, the North Hadley Village Hall, and uh, or North Hadley Fire Station. So, go ahead. Just uh, did, you, did you have another study for the North Hadley Hall, which uh, came to about two million dollars? From I think that was before the uh, yeah. before the Mohawk one. That was about five years ago. One point five million. Well, dollars. one point five million for uh, seventy percent of the building. They didn't do nothing with the fire department because they didn't know what was going to happen there. But the uh, uh, building itself was uh, estimated. Yeah, that's about about the right choice for the time. But uh, and of course. 1.5 yeah there's there's been a lot of different ideas around and uh, we, we really need your opinions on this because this particular building right here can be utilized for a lot of other different departments including the town hall the North Hadley Village Hall the park and rec um, we're what are you using the planning board offices in this building right now as it stands uh, we, we are quite cramped in the town hall, so you know we're looking at that building too and what we could do with this. Th this seems to be the, the most useful building right now with with the money and the time that we have rather than I don't think we're going to look at all seven of these buildings at once. you know you're, you're looking at over 20 million dollars. If we look at something like this that we can move a few other offices or a few other departments into and utilize this one building and then ten, eight or ten years down the road see what we can do with with the next one. They're, obviously they're not in that bad of shape where they didn't close them down immediately. Is that correct? Is this where we're at? Basically, where we're at now, according to Mr. Nyhart, who's supposed to be here. I guess there he is. He just walked in the door. <laughs> Come on in, Tim. But I think people have to understand that once you start on these pro once you start on these projects, you have to go right from the bottom up and out. That it's um, you have to do the prevailing wage. These buildings are two stories. You have to make them handicap accessible. They have to have elevators in them. All the buildings that we're talking about are going from the bottom floor up. Um, wiring, electricity, plumbing, making them handicap accessible, handicap bathrooms for everybody. Um, so this isn't any small project that we're talking about. Along with the, the fire code too. So 
this is what we're looking at. This is the direction we're going in. How much money do you want to spend on these buildings? Do you find it feasible? The Park and Rec have felt that they've outgrown the North Hadley Hall for all their programs that they have, that it's, it's doable for the time being, but it's not really acceptable for future use. Um, they're looking to expand. They would like another building um, to provide a bigger space for what their programs are been growing from year to year. Um, so we're looking to our citizens to give us some direction on how and what you would like us to do with these buildings. It's going to be out of pocket. There is some money that I'm sure that CPA funds can assist us with, but they certainly can't pay for the whole total projects of these buildings. So it's it's a big thing that we're asking everybody to undertake here and, and see what we really want to do with these buildings. Okay, uh, Ms. Tuber? Uh, Ms. Tuber? Sure. When this building was renovated earlier to become the senior center, it was done with grant money from the state. Mm -hmm. My question is, how much of this building has to be reserved as part of the senior center because of that grant? I mean, you talk about coming in and using it all, but Thank you. And how much has to be reserved? Thank you. Mr. Dixon, we have a power to it? Yeah, the, uh, the terms of the grant uh, was through the Community Development uh, Block Grant uh, Program of the federal government. And it was, uh, it was building needed to be uh, used as a senior center for a period of 10 years and we've gone beyond that uh, period so there's no further restriction because of the grant money that was used back to repair this building. And I, I would, uh, last Monday, Mr. Nixon and I uh, went to a CPA meeting and there was many good ideas thrown out, all right? We have these two plans. That doesn't mean the idea we're going to have is in these two books. I remember somebody mentioned at that meeting, and I can't remember who it was, Probably me. said that we could move Town Hall in here. That was me. And take Park and Rec and some of the senior uh, Council on Aging into Town Hall. And I thought about it. And I counted up the offices that were in Town Hall. And if we just went on the first floor and the second, it could be done and not touch this part of the uh, building at all, the bottom. But it's, I'm just saying that ideas are coming from everywhere. But there is, there is, I mean, just reading the newsletter from, from what the, um, Susan put out this for January and February. There are many new programs that are being started here in, the, in this building. They're renovating, they're painting, they're working hard to make this place a better senior center. Um, they just redid a room upstairs on the second floor and they want to redo paint and do things down here. Um, so without anybody being here, I don't, is anybody here from Council on Aging tonight? Thank you. Hi. Um, so I, you know, I know that we can't just disrupt all of your programs that you're trying to get up and running here either. So, I mean, I would like to hear from you and other people tonight on that also. That's not working. That's just the team. Um, an another quick point that I think is important for everybody to understand, we're making decisions um, starting soon um, in the near term, but let's think about you know where the town is going to be 10, 15, 20 years from now. Um, we, we, have, we have a large contingent of seniors in this town, but that number is most likely to grow into the future. So you want to make sure that if you have adequate senior center facilities, you want to make sure they're able to handle any future increase in your number of seniors. And the general populace says you're going to have an increase in seniors over time. So what, what if the senior center is currently in this building, and we look at it and we say, you know, there's X amount of this space that is being utilized for non-senior activities and we can put this in here, we can put that in here. That's fine for today. But where are we 15 years from now when we have more seniors and we need we need more area for the Council on Aging and the Senior Center? I, I think those are really, really important uh, thoughts to have 
moving forward, not just on this building or any of these buildings, if we're going to spend the money to fix them, and you want to fix them one time, you don't want to fix them today and come back five years from now because you get killed by all the building codes and the fire codes because they change so often. Think about what you're going to use that building for for the next 25 years. Are you willing to spend the money to get what you think you need for 25 years? And then that's how you start the thought process on each one of these buildings. And that's the difficult part because you have to project. We all know where we are today, but where are we going to be 15 or 20 years from now? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that's a good point made because in 1950, when they put this addition on that we're sitting in right now, uh, the, the citizens of this town thought about the expansion and, and where we're at right now. We're not utilizing it for an elementary school at this point, but we're using it for a senior center right now. Uh, and in, in that 60 year time frame, look at how the town has grown, you know? Mr. In light, of, excuse me, in light of what Brian just said, do we have a need and space assessment at this point in time before we decide whether we want to fix buildings? Right. We need to know what they're going to be used for and how they can be used today and in the future. You know, we're talking about moving town hall someplace and moving park and rec someplace, and I realize it's just theory, but it's, it's good to think about and decide, okay, we need this much space for this entity, and this much space for that entity, how can we make that all work? And then what buildings may or may not satisfy those needs, and then we decide whether to fix or replace at that point. If, if, if everybody's had a chance to look at the document, one of the critical things that VRA did was they went to department heads. They went to the park and rec. And said, okay, this is where you currently are in the senior center. This is your current programming. And then they asked, you know, they listed, um, they listed needs. So they actually talked to department heads, not just looked at the building and said, yeah, that's what it costs to fix it. But they did talk to department heads and said, where, where are you, your future needs going to be so they could incorporate that into this report? And that's why if you look at this report, each building has multiple scenarios um, you know if you fix it the way it is at the square footage it is um, are you moving that department out of there and changing a different building there's different scenarios in here and a lot of that was based off of the research that they did with individual departments as to their future needs so there is some of that in here and so you could think about that. Um, I know one scenario as far as North Hadley Hall was concerned was to auction that building off and sell it and to move Park and Rec down here into this building. There's a number for that. <laughs> they tell you that you would have to put an expansion on this building to satisfy the needs, but at least then you would have it all in one building. So there is a number for that. So there was some of that done. Thank you. Andy? Uh, just to answer Randy's question, we uh, Park and Rec has had an opportunity to speak with the select board uh, on a, few, a number of occasions, as well as the uh, folks who, for the DRA report, to discuss the current program uh, offerings and needs and what our future plans that we project them to be five and ten years down the road. So uh, those needs have been ex expressed, and, and we've also talked about the pros and cons of, of uh, staying where we are or relocating down here. Uh, Senior Center, and uh, so there. I think we've done that what, three times now. Yeah, so we so, uh, you, you appreciate the opportunity to have sat at the table. Um, to the, uh, the town hall move is a new idea, but there, there, we would certainly have to discuss more uh, of that because there'd be a lot of the same concerns mm -hmm. I would expect from. Um, from mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure we'll be talking more about this tonight. All right? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Many of the people here I haven't met. I'm the new senior service director, so I live in this building Monday through Friday. Um, so I have no say in what the town's people decide, and I'm happy to abide by whatever you decide. But living here, I have a couple of things that come into play that I think you should consider when you're educating yourself on making some of your decisions. One of which is, if Park and Rec does come in here, and or town hall, 
you are going to need a lot more parking than what we have out here. Okay, so that's a major consideration. You need to think about that field and whether you can make that into, you know, lose, if Park and Rec can lose that field and make that into additional parking between town hall business, senior center business, and Park and Rec. Um, and whether the offset hours, Kathy and I haven't spoken about the hours in so far as programming goes versus my programming and, and all the rest of that. And um, also the only other thing that I want to throw in there, you had mentioned about a growing population and all the rest of that. Um, you can count on a 20% growth within the next 20 to 30 years for your elder population. Um, and those needs are gonna be significantly different than what they are now because you have a whole elder elder population that has more in-home needs and more outreach services and the new younger seniors coming in have vastly different programming desires than the generations prior to them so you have this overlap and I can see some of the park and rec programs working well in that overlap and vice versa, but um, you really need to be sure moving down the line as it was voiced that you're looking 20, 30, 40 years down the road because prevailing wage is what you need to do when you're a municipality. And so rehabbing these buildings costs significantly more than it would <coughs> build new. And that's another thing that I'm sure you'll all talk about down <coughs> the road. And I'm not advocating for one or the other. I just want you to really think outside the box and not just settle for what, trying to put a Band-Aid on things and push things together. Really decide what you want and what you need and then how can you make that happen? Thank you. Thank you. I think most everybody agrees that we're not going to put a band-aid on any of these buildings. If we do rehab them, we're going to rehab them from the bottom up and bring them all up to code and make them last another 50 or 60 years. Uh, I, you know, that, I, I don't think that's a question here. If anybody does have that, I wish they'd raise their hands right now, you know, but this is this is what we're looking at. And I know, and like I said, times are tough right now, and, and, and the money's tight. And if we do pick one building to work on for, like I said, the first eight years, see how it goes, see how the funding goes, we could start the, the next building or the next project at that time, you know. I, I think we're all here, and, and we all know the dire need for all the repairs to all the buildings at this point. But we just we're looking for a little bit more direction on where we want to go with it. Um, I, everybody's thinking you know, 20, 30 years down the road is a good thing. Um, I was wondering how many people are here from the historical commission. Okay, well they they all at least the North Hadley Hall was put together and there was no indoor plumbing. So all of that stuff that's in there now is an addition already. This building was here, indoor plumbing was the idea. Those things make an idea. The, the, the parking is certainly a consideration. Um, but when you consider some of the more historic places, the older places, Town Hall's been there a while, was plumbing around when the Town Hall went up. Um, water in the building is probably one of the worst things. The building inspector will tell you. So if you're going to re repair any of the historical structures and they need a roof, you should probably, if you're even considering saving it or even selling it, probably put a roof on it first. Um, so in short term, not to say that it's a Band-Aid, but that would be a Band-Aid that would save any of these historic structures that if you don't, you know, if you're going to consider saving North Hadley Hall, it needs a roof now. They can't wait another year to while, while you fix up th this building. At least short-term money needs to be spent on certain things if you're going to consider saving in the future. Um, this, I, I agree with a lot of the people, this would be a perfect place to, to start expanding, but the parking is definitely needed. Um, I don't know how much of the, you know, you can expand on, on the parking in that direction, you know, considering you, you do need park and rec field space. It's great to have the, the fields over by the fire department of the school. Um, 
but it's getting tight down here on Route 9. Um, if, if you're to save North Hadley Hall, maybe some of the smaller departments could move in there. Um, you, you might be able to save yourself uh, having to put in an elevator if you just use the upper floors for storage or something and you don't need to have public people, you know, public access to that area. Um, that would save a ton of money. And would save, that's probably one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture is that North Hadley Hall has a lot of exterior stuff. It's pretty nice. You don't see a lot of that around. I mean, I think every one of our historic buildings are pretty unique. North Hadley Hall, Russell School, and Hooker School here. I, I've got a question for you, Mr. Dyer. Did you go around with these people when they were making their inspections on some of these buildings? Uh, John, uh, DRA? Yeah. They called me a couple times, but I did not follow them on every single day. Gary, Gary Bird did. How about you, Gary? Did you Gary go around did. with them? Yes. I went to this plan here, DRA, and I couldn't believe that they had no plan for the third floor. They just left it. We're here? Yeah. Uh, no plan for an elevator, and I think it's what, 2,600 square feet, maybe more, I'm not positive. And I was just wondering, do you have any, did they tell you why they didn't do it? Or? I didn't really get a copy of that, I haven't checked it, but I know, when they did go up, I know to go up to the third floor, I checked it out when we were talking about the Historical Society over there. They, the elevator here is not up to code anymore. So now you've got to put a larger one in, a, a newer one, and you've got to redo it so it does go up. It has to cancel down to the exit floor and all of that. Um, I don't know if they didn't take it into consideration because it's not being used right now and they didn't, they didn't bring up using that space, but... So that's... A, <clears throat> it seems to be a lot of space just to be ignored in this building. Yes, Mr. Dick. Uh, I, I agree with that because it's beautiful space up there. It would make a great art studio for people, and it was used at one time. But there are other things in the study that I didn't, I didn't see really um, talked about in depth. You know, they didn't say whether any of the commodes flushed or what the water, you know, they didn't talk about that. They just kind of perused a lot of things. It says some of the heating thermostats down here that were no longer working should be shut off, or should be taken down, but nowhere in the study does it say that the whole building is, is, is dealt with, has one electric thermostat up across from the office that does the entire building. There's no multi, and that wasn't addressed in the study either. So please get a study of, you know, a, a copy of the study, and if you have questions further, I really recommend that you talk with the people that live in the building to see if you have questions beyond that, what they experience there, and if they know more about it, or talk to Gary. Okay, Tim, you have Because he knows. <laughs> well, I'm just going to put it out. Um, these buildings are in really bad shape, and quite honestly, we have we have sound, so somewhat sound structural buildings, but the, essentially all the insides have to be gutted. But I think we have to, starting with some of the comments that were made, we have to look at what the needs are, and I think. We're trying to fit these squares into round holes and say, well, can we get this over here or can we get that over there? Let's start off with the fundamentals. And I'll take this, the senior center. Let's look at what the, the best and the thing would be for seniors. It's one floor. It's fully accessible from one end to the other. The worst thing that you want to do for the seniors is have multi floors for them to go up and down. It might not be realistic for us, but we have to start off with the fundamentals and find out and really realistically put it on paper and find out what the needs are. And I don't think we've really done that. Certainly the DRA came around to all of us and said, well, if you, what would you like for your office space? Or what, what are, your, are your needs? But I don't think we've really compiled that into a realistic report to say, here's our, our starting point. 
And, and again, I go back to the seniors. We're trying to put the seniors into a building that's multi-floor. Is that realistic? Quite honestly, I don't think so. Because again, we're talking about future. <coughs> These buildings were built, they're 100 years old. They have done us well. And people have asked me my opinion, and I will give it right now. I think at this time, we really have to realistically look at these buildings and how much money we're going to have to sink into them and what we're going to get out of them at the end. And is that the best approach to all the needs that we are looking for, be it seniors, be it the kids, be it the town offices and everything? Start off there. Um, again, I think we're trying to uh, push these square requirements into a round hole, and it's, and it's not going to work well. It might be, at the end, it might be the only way we can do it. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, what are we going to do with the buildings? Just because the town is utilizing them, it doesn't mean it's the end of the buildings. It could be a better fit for the entire town to sell them with restrictions, with whatever we feel that can happen. And there are some good ideas out there. We still have the old buildings. We still have what's around here to look at, especially Russell School, especially North Hadley Hall. But it's not the only approach for the town to utilize all these buildings. And it could be a consensus of a lot of people in this town that that's what we want to do. And so be it, and then we can go ahead and figure out what we're going to do and put whoever in what building. But let's look at what we have right now. We have the park and rec in the North Hadley Hall. The assembly hall is on the second floor. Do we do that in a design now? No. And the reason is, again, we go back to accessibility, easy way out. We don't want to put kids on a second floor. We do that with our schools. We have that with preschool. They have to get in. When they're into that building, they have a door to get out directly. And those are the codes that have happened over time to make people safer. So if we, if we go ahead and fix up North Hadley Hall for Park and Rec, is that the best approach? If you ask my opinion, no. Why? Because we're utilizing a second. Maybe we can flip things around. But we don't have those studies as of yet. Um, and every scenario has been broached. Should we put Park and Rec down here? Should we put it in Russell School? Should we put it in the town hall. They're all viable, but is it the best approach that we could have? I quite honestly think it's about time the town takes a really hard look at these buildings and say, they've really done us well in these hundred years. Let's build something new. And let's build something that's better and that will last us for a hundred years for all these type of scenarios that we need. We, we can have some idea what we're going to need in the future. As Suzanne said, our, our seniors are going to grow 20%. And we know what they're going to look at to some extent. But we don't know everything. But we, it might be the way to go. What does that mean? We have to get new land. I think there's land around here that we can get. Certainly not on Route 9 because it's horrendously expensive, but there might be some other place. We have to approach that somehow. But there has to be a start and there has to be some group that's willing to take that on and push it and go all the way as fast as we can. Because as what was just said, um, you know, North Hadley Hall, we need a roof. The pigeons are back in there. And it's, it's going to be a disaster later on. And the next time some major thing happens with these buildings, I don't think that we'll be able to keep those whatever uses in there in those buildings because it's going to cost us a huge amount of money. So let's start off with fundamentals. Let's really realistically look at what the needs are, what we can 
surmise for the next 25, 50, and plus years, and go from there. Okay. Um, Has there been any uh, study about needs beyond town offices, beyond what the town needs for a senior center, beyond what they need for park and rec? Because it sounds sort of like people are thinking about almost like musical chairs. We can move this from this, from this, and this. And we may be leaving out things like fire stations, or housing, or anything else you can think of. I was wondering if there'd been a, there a town plan. The fire department, we have some serious issues with trying to stuff these uh, larger um, equipment up into North Abbey. That's not going to happen. I mean, there's a lot of different scenarios that we're going to be faced with. And a lot of the points have been covered <laughs> since I put my hand up a little while ago. But uh, just to echo uh, Mr. and I have say, uh, uh, statements that the 800-pound gorilla in the, in the room is the North Abbey Fire Station as well. And that um, when we talk about what we're going to do with the building, um, I'm, I'm, it's my understanding that, and I don't know if the fire department representatives here tonight, um, I, 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 I think that they're... Uh, Certainly, has an expressed desire to have a presence up in North Hadley due to the uh, large uh, residential population up there, and um, you know, so there's going to have to be some major modifications to that building to be able to house equipment, either that building or find a different site. So, you know, as you mentioned, that's coming to a head as well. Um, but uh, and again, getting back to some of the general statements, we, we uh, Park and Rec has talked about its needs. The fire department has talked about their needs as far as North Hadley is concerned. I don't know. But we've talked about how uh, the senior center being, uh, you know, the one of the options on the table. Um, you know, the, our, our concerns with coming coming into this area as much as I mean, I'm sure Suzanne uh, has her own set of future needs for her. Um, Department, the Park and Rec certainly doesn't see a lot of our future needs being met in this facility without extensive renovations. And once you start looking at the size of the renovations, one starts to consider whether or not that cost would be spent, or that money would be better spent on a facility that meets uh, longer term goals or you know, is, is more flexible. Once you start on renovations, as I said before, you have to start from the ground up. You are responsible for opening up this Pandora box and doing everything you can to bring it up to code. So there's just no way that you can get around just putting renovations on here. Once you start, you are committed to be doing the whole building. There's no way of getting around it. The, uh, the fire chief and Timmy and myself have actually started discussing the North Hadley Fire Station. And for emergency preparedness purposes, we've got a communication center, at least a fire station right now on E Street, but if a tornado or a hurricane came through and took that station out, we would probably look at putting a substation up there, put a cruiser in there, the police radios, the fire radios, and a spot for a couple trucks. If we needed, if that building wasn't here anymore on E Street, we would need a place to dispatch out of to, to run our emergency operations out of. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about Brian. We've had discussions about that. Putting the uh, you know all substation up in North uh, Hadley. This is what this is all about. We're hoping there's more ideas out there. And where do people want to start? You know, we we don't want to propose some kind of program on whatever building it is and bring it to town meeting, and we've wasted. Who knows how many hours of time preparing it, and it gets shot down the town meeting. So if we get all the ideas out here right now and give us some direction in what we're going in, or again, getting a building committee together that can commit the kind of time and effort that's needed into all these buildings, maybe the direction we need to go. That that hold on. yeah, I, I agree with John that. Uh, the, the secondary dispatching facility is the glaring need for us. That if something goes down, we have no way to tell us what's wrong. We have no way to dispatch the right people to help you in, in a major catastrophe or even, even a blizzard. And for a community shelter in North Hadley, where is it? That would be the North Hadley Hall. You have no standby power in that building. 
you know, and that, that you you have you have a place to put the dispatch center upstairs in the in the room that the park and rec took over, and that you have to have the center part that uh, North Hadley Fire Station here because if you don't, watch your insurance rates go up. The, the, the fire department would put that station there because of the growth in residential houses out there. So the ISO, the insurance services organization, probably mentioned quite. Well, we know that. The, the, yeah, the, but the thing is that you got to have to do something up there for yeah. the fire department. We yeah. know that. And I think that is a priority, and it has to be done quickly. Yes. Because we're not going to be able to get any other uh, fire apparatus in that building. It's too narrow for those bays. And it's. So there are there are some con contingency plans that we are working on, and, and the hope is that you it'll can forward. you can buy a, a, a fire apparatus to fit the building, but it's awfully expensive to have a custom piece built, shoehorned in there. And we did that a lot on, that. on, uh, on West Street. We finally got away from that. So, uh, hey, go. a couple points came up. One, the fire station in North Hadley. And I did hear you talking one night about building. Um, one thing that concerns me about that is the idea of putting up a Morton, you know, a Butler Morton building where the playground is. I'm concerned about that because you've got two 19th century historic buildings. And you're going to put up something we would not allow a new business to build down here in, in our industrial district. The planning board wouldn't allow it. They, you've got to have flyboard horizontal, flyboard siding. So you're going to put this ugly, I'm going to say ugly, because that's my opinion. You're going to put this ugly thing, 21st century thing, between these two historic buildings, one of which, by the way, to me is very disrespectful to the church, but that thing next door, so that. If we need a structure like that up there, isn't there another little piece of land somewhere that we could consider putting in? That's one thing. The other thing, you talked about a building committee. The historical committee has asked for that at Fort Cal a year ago, that you five select board people and the town administrator you can't do this task. It's humongous. You can't get this all together, do all this work, and, and plan all this that needs to be done. You do need a building committee. And we live in a town with a lot of professional people. And I think that that should get underway as soon as possible, because you need help. I'm not being insulting. Because no. I understand. I'm talking about your I, for one, appreciate that remark. I, I, I said it right from the beginning. Uh, but that's, <coughs> that's why we're here. So we're willing to take any remarks that come forward. We're not offended by anything. Uh, we're here to present whatever we can about these buildings. Whoever wants to jump on board, that's perfectly fine with me also. There's no offensive tenant. I'm no, saying. No, no, I know that. And it's I'm not offended at all. for you to get this done. Well, we're, we're alone. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ed? Yeah. Um, I'm partly following on. Um, but what I've heard, and I haven't read all the reports, so I'm not particularly knowledgeable, as many of you are here, but I've heard that Park and Rec feels um, roadblocks in their future in North Hadley Hall. I've heard that the fire department fear, sees roadblocks in their future in North Hadley Hall. And I heard that the cost to bring it up to code from the bottom up is fairly large. <laughs> Not necessarily as large as new construction, but fairly large. Um, it seems to me, off the top of my head, that selling North Hadley Hall with restrictions for historic preservation, finding, as Peg said, a piece of land in North Hadley, an appropriate piece of land, not Route 9, in North Hadley, and putting up an appropriate new building, as attractive as we could make it, that could accommodate both Park and Rec and 
fire and public safety if needed, and I don't think those are incompatible needs, that that might be a good way to go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, that's, that's a good point you have. Uh, we did the same with the elementary school and our police and fire station, uh, station that's existing right now. So, you know, there's a field between them, and it's absolutely possible to do something like that up in North Avenue. Is there an estimate on the total cost of what it would be for the exterior for North Hadley Hall and the interior and to make it a five million location for park and rec? I mean, is it actually doable and is there a cost? What is there an estimate? Well, it, as Tim said, and with the plans that um, Park and Rec brought us, they've outgrown that building. So I personally don't feel that Park and Rec should be up there. I think that they need and have needed over the years a different building and a different... Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're not actually able to use the whole building at this point anyway. So I think, I think our, 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 the number of programs that we've been able to offer has actually contracted due to safety concerns in the building. Right. Uh, but we did think, and, and just to explain that we certainly have enjoyed our, our time there, and, you know, it's, right. uh, it's, 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 it's quite well, and if there was future expansion, perhaps it would continue to do so, but with the plans we've seen so far uh, you know, will keep us the same size where we're going to be and what we're doing now. We won't be in that I, think, I think I've got some figures for you here. One of them was to repair existing North Hadley Village Hall. These repairs only cover the park and rec portion of the building. That was two million one hundred and twenty eight thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars. That was from uh German Roland and Anderson. No, it's almost free. And then uh, to reorganize this building and add a park and rec addition for park and rec was uh six million seven hundred and thirty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy six dollars. Hope that helps. Yes, sir. Just to follow on what I was suggesting, if the town did do a new building in some place in North Abbey that would allow Park and Rec to have what they needed and public safety, it also would avoid the traffic uh, parking problem here, which then would otherwise interfere with Park and Rec maintaining their field. And you're saying that and parking is already a problem. There haven't been a library trustee. We've had struggles with inadequate parking for the library and on certain nights the senior center is busy the library is busy there's no place to park there's the town hall we can park at town hall we can get in there um, <laughs> but i like your idea because perhaps if we could get a butler in a morton at some other place and maybe perhaps combine them that's you know, an option we didn't some, think of. someone else had brought up a few times about the old church right next door here to probably purchase that piece of land and turn that into a parking lot you know so the library would have more area to park right close to the building. We tried to buy that several times and they don't want to sell it. Really? Mm -hmm. The church. Well, they sold that one so quickly up in they sold South Deerfield. They've sold several of them, but this one is a bone of contention for the last 10 years. CPA tried to buy it. Well, it's and kind of it landlocked. Town. And they wanted you too much the money and they said now it's a, a storage for religious artifacts, so it's tax free and everything else and it's sitting there going to hell. And they won't sell it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I just want to make one comment. When we talk about Morton Building, uh, I, I know a lot of people have this idea what a Morton Building is, but it, it's more of a, a, a design, um, a structural design of a type of a building that we're thinking of. We will certainly, and, there, and everybody's uh, very concerned about the look of it. We, it's not going to look like a, what the typical Morton Building is, and we will meet the requirements of historical if we go forward with that. Um, and it will be compatible with all the uh, structures up there. You, you'll like it. I think that you know, from what I'm hearing that the North Hadley Fire Station is the number one priority. Is that correct? Not either. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, I mean, what is the number one 
That's my right, right. Tim gave his opinion. I'm going to give you mine. I, I think this building right here would be the building to rebuild from the cellar right up to the second and third floor, and maybe even put another floor on. This one. You, uh, yeah, this one. This one would be complete in a matter of 10 years or 15 years or whenever we start these other buildings, you will have a complete facility here where we can temporarily move all these other offices and kids and elderly or whoever into uh, we'll have more than enough room here. We may find out if we do spend that kind of money on this building that we don't need to put that type of money into that building. Maybe, John. At, maybe at that point, this will handle everything. No, you're going to need a fire station up there. Yeah, and you're going to park and rec and municipal offices from the town hall. Yeah, but you know. So I think I, I'm really looking at this building as, as, as the first priority. I think uh, what I'm saying, say, caring though, you is let you talk. No. that fire station, if you're going to hit, you're going to need to do something up there. Yeah. That lot, of, that playground in between the church and the, the building is very small. Yeah. It may uh, not be there. We're, not, not, we're not saying that it's no, there. Okay, but it's, it's very small. Uh, a fire station would fill it up, but it's also getting trucks in and out of there. Is it is going to be difficult? You won't have the the frontage that you've got on the fire station here to park a front truck out front, etc. Uh, so build a fire station up in that area. It doesn't have to be right in the middle of North Hadley. Correct. No, it could be further. It could be north. Yeah. Go a little further north. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities. You can do there. do a big enough building that would house parks and recreation and still in the future be expanded or taken over by the fire department as need be. Yeah, do, do a partial project. And that would, that would be the, uh, I think that would probably be the first thing to do. And then get rid of the I understand what you're saying, but you buy that piece of land, you put your park and rec up to their specifications, and the rest of the property will, will be there for future use for fire and police whenever the time comes. Mm -hmm. Well, build it big enough so that they can go there now, but if, as the needs change, they could take over the parks and recreation section of it and then get rid of the Russell School. What do you mean by that? Yeah. That's another that's gonna be another discussion at another meeting. Now, okay. I'd like to just throw this out there. Who wants to sell that corner piece of property that goes all the way to the school and connects us almost I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to discuss that at a different time, sir. You ask you ask what yes. I would say. Yes. I'm that's that's, that's correct. Okay, uh, you have a night call down here. Just I see a hand. Uh, we've back. asked several times. I see a hand back. Oh, eight or ten hands. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It seems that. Well, he said one way uh, okay. back. Oh, okay. It's a it's a meeting about the buildings, and it, and it seems it's not so much about the buildings as where we find the space. No matter which project you choose to do <laughs> first, or ground up, or whatever somebody's going to get displaced. Where are they going to go? Uh, park and Rec is probably going to be the easiest one to move because that's pretty much the most flexible type of activity. But they're still going to need a space. So if it's about the buildings, maybe it's worth, well, let's address the Band-Aids. Let's get the roof on the North Hadley Hall so we we have a building to argue about to sell mm -hmm. or sell but at least it's sell as is why are you going to sell it sell it you're going to put money into it you're going to sell it well, well if, if you're going to tear it down why 
are you going to put well, money I, into I, it? I, it doesn't sound like anybody we can afford to tear anything down. Well, as we need the space, so we don't need the space is, per se up there. The the space. Well, there's there's a need. There's a critical need for for emergency services. Well, somewhere we don't need to Hadley. have it there. We can. Find we don't need to spot. have it there. That's correct. I would say if you're going to save North Hadley Hall. Take it out of you know either auction it off or sell it. Whatever you can do to to save it. So you're okay. So you're saying save it. If you're not going to tear it down, if, if, you know you want to use it for something. No, we don't want it. Well, he's saying save it. <laughs> he's saying we don't save want it. it. We don't want it. Not necessarily for town purposes. The, right. The right. 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 No, at least this part of it. Okay. It's your opinion that North Hadley Hall is of no use to the town of Hadley anymore for for a, you know, a practical purpose. It's, it has historic value, yes. The church up there deserves a little respect with, you know, in terms of historic value. They don't want to see a fire department in between. It will cost a fortune to do that. But I think find a structure somewhere that we can house one or two of these agencies that need to be housed while these projects are happening. If this building is to start, it's going to kick everybody out of here. It's okay. not going to be easy to work. Well, okay. well, Mr. Fitzgibbon. Well, I'd like to throw a couple things out. I agree with John and just about everybody else that this is the most practical building to do anything with. The town already owns all the land from here to the Legion and back of it for future building as for future reference and if things grow. And next to it, there's a farm up there that is owned by a man that's coming along in his age and before he puts it in APR and you can't touch it, there's about eight acres of land in there that is viable building land. If, if the town was smart, we'd try to get a hold of it for future. And bordering that, in the housing complex, which is owned by the state, there's nine acres of land in there and only about four and a half of it is used for housing. There are several acres in there. If we could dicker with the state to return some of that to the town, that could also abut this farmland and the land we already own. So there's good potential for building and using this building and future expansion all the way back. Yeah, um, I'm with the North Alley Church, but my comments aren't really uh, on behalf of the church, but myself. But what I'm hearing is um, new construction really is a, a priority that you can't, as you put it, uh, put squares into circles or vice versa. And um, so I think uh, new construction is indicated um, in terms of the North Hadley Hall. I think if you do uh, not preserve that space, what you put for restrictions, if you do sell it, is really uh, critical. And I know um, having access North Hadley many, many times, um, it's really important to preserve the feeling of a village. And so that land in between the church and the hall is vital. It would be, uh, uh, I think, uh, terrible to uh, put new construction right there. I think uh, there's a problem with uh, off-street parking there. Uh, you know, people who uh, go ice fishing to uh, using the river during the summer months uh, to when we have concerts at the church. Uh, we have to park on the sidewalk, which isn't very good. I think having a, like a nice little common there, uh, maybe you could uh, shift some of the parking away from the uh, little parking triangle where they use the ramps. There's really no off-street parking anywhere in North Hadley, and so that land is the only land that we have in uh, that area that you could uh, sort of take uh, advantage of to uh, either do a better job accessing the lake if the lake stays. Um, and um, so, I, so those are my comments. Right behind Andy there. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you're, you're next. I, for sure. I, I just wanted to say something affirmative about North Hadley Hall. You know, I, when we talk about the needs of the town and, and the purposes to which these buildings could be put, that gathering space, you know, North Hadley Hall was designed to be a gathering space for the community, and that's why it has that quite nice um, assembly room on the second floor. If the 
the town were to decide to retain that building, I think it actually does serve a meaningful purpose in the town. That ground floor has come to be used in a lot of ad hoc ways, and, and, and it can continue to be used I think, in ad hoc ways, I suppose. But I've always been interested in that assembly hall, which I think, you know, when we have these kind of events, here we are in this basement, which is also not designed for gatherings, and when the community needs to come together for talks, performances, I think that's an important part of community life. And so I just want to say that I do see a role for North Hadley Hall in the town's future. And just to speak to some of the financial issues around that, uh, to this gentleman's point, that roofing project in the old Mohawk study is a $250,000 project. They have that at the top of the list, imperative to do right away, as, as we all know, and that's CPA fundable. Much of the ticket for the uh, preservation of North Headley Hall is CPA fundable, and big chunks of it are grant fundable. Uh, I get these, these messages through my work email, and a, uh, a grant opportunity came through for um, the Massachusetts Cultural Council that funds capital projects in the range of two hundred fifty to $650,000. The Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund called just came out, also funds big capital projects. Yeah, that's right here. Right there, yep. The USDA used to have a pro project um, to fund village, rural village community centers. And the Mohawk study lists several other grant opportunities. Yeah. So never I don't think that. it's the case it, that the town would wind up um, paying a lot of this out of pocket, as has been said. I think there are a lot of sources for that. So I just, before people write off North Hadley Hall, I'd like to say that I see an active role for that building in the town's future, quite apart from its historic value and its aesthetic value in North Hadley Village. And sure. I'm going to right. Yes. Bye. I think the point was well made uh, by my colleague in that we're talking about buildings and we're talking about money. We're talking about historic preservation. There's the opportunity as a taxpayer to sadly to not have 100% cost of doing it because funds are available. That is, funds that are matching funds. There's other sources of funds to do the restoration on the outside of that building to make that building sound as an envelope. And then one of my other colleagues earlier this evening said that really what they really need is a, a building committee or a building people with expertise to do this. We'll go to town meeting and we'll look for millions of dollars to do buildings because we're going to come here for other buildings. But I think the one thing that we have to keep in mind is that the seniors are going to look to neighboring towns and cities and seeing new senior centers that have been built with a combination of state, federal money, which is available to anyone in the general area. And that the seniors 20 years down the road are not going to be satisfied being in the basement of a 1950 building affixed to a 1922 school. <laughs> that even if you rehab it or redo it, we all know that certain things only last about 50 years. So let's approach it in the way that's what's best for the town. Restoration of historic buildings, it's because it affords the opportunity to tap into funding resources that are available that we can apply for to use it to save the tax burden of the people to fix up the North Hadley Hall. And that's what we came to look at tonight. I'm, I'm very aware of the concerns of where do we put this, where do we put that, where the buildings and what the future uses are. I think what we need to do, as our building inspector pointed out, we need to take action now and as soon as possible to make that a sound structure outside the preservation. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to keep it too. Uh, I live in North Valley, like the place um, from a historical perspective, small town perspective, all that stuff. Uh, and especially uh, from what Maura said, you can, uh, if it's CPA fundable, I'd like to see some actual numbers put to that and see how much that'll save the taxpayers and or the town. Um, CPA. So it's Who's like, it? oh, I'd like to see a straw poll. I mean, we might all be fighting against each other. I don't know. It sounds like the, the board up there wants to blow up the building and a lot of people about a 
out here want to save the building. I'd like to just see a raise of hands just out of general where we, where we all stand on so far. Well, hold on. Uh, well, reiterate the gentleman is talking about the finances. You've got to remember that the money we have today is going to be worth more than the money we have tomorrow. So the, the quicker we move on a project, the looking down the road, the least, the, the least cost we're going to incur in uh, as to go up the building, I don't think we can get a permit. <laughs> Tim, Tim Rick, I would like to see some of your that see you know about that. Oh, uh, there's a whole, the, we're looking at this, this study here, just to replace the roof on the North Hadley Hall is $352,000, and that's the roof and gutters. Um, I, have, I have a whole list of what it would cost for the bottom line. Removing asbestos in the whole nine yards in that building is $3,305,501. But, but that doesn't take where that money is going to come from. If it's going to come from somewhere else. Well, with the state and the condition well, it's, that it's in, it's going to hard to get $3 million out of somebody. There, there's preservation grant money available. There's CPA funding available. For certain town, things. Yeah, for right. certain things. So the town share would probably be proportional Less. to be about whatever 80%. the total of that would How much? 80% monthly. So that's what we're looking at. Yes, sir. percent of three million three hundred. Yeah, no, right. Hold that, hold that. Um, uh, my biggest fear when we have a public forum like this, people is think, you know, we're ready to tear a building down. I, I've been a select board member, and this is my ninth year. I've had two private contractors contact me personally, uh, by phone or by face, and said, if North Hadley Hall does not suit the needs of the town of Hadley in the future, they said, put that building up for auction and you will have people buy it. Yeah. There is a major shortage in this area for very nice one bedroom or two bedroom condos. We're not talking college students packing 16 kids in a building, okay? But there's, there's, a, there's a niche there. And there's builders out there that would take that building restore it for far less money than we would because they don't have to pay prevailing wage. The exterior of the building would stay the same. When you drove by, it would still look like North Hadley Hall, but other than some pigeons, uh, park and wreck, and a couple fire trucks, the only difference is there might be six or eight cars out front because people would be you know, living there. That would be the only difference. And you get the benefit of putting that back onto the tax rolls because it's privately held. Yeah. And then that person or the owner of that building would upkeep it for the next hundred years. So the most efficient way, the most efficient way in dollars, cents, and everything else is to sell that building and let somebody privately maintain it. And then it would cost the town zero you're to maintain get money that back. building for the next hundred years. And you get the money for and selling the property. And you get the tax money. And you and get the money tax. for selling the property. You get everything. So that's buy another piece of property. property and buy another piece of property right. just where there is so I, for the I, fire department. I, but I, I don't, none of us, I, I can honestly say in all the discussion we've had in the last two years, none of us have any intention of leveling that building. I know, I know we did that with the old gym, but that was an old gym and it was a tinderbox. If you talk to the fire department, they said, whatever you do, <laughs> don't let anybody in that building because if it ever catches on fire, we won't even make it to the light on East Street and it'll be on the ground. So don't have a difference to, there. You don't have to worry, the floor fell right out. Yeah, I'm saying. I'm saying. That. So, yeah. Andy, um, I have a question about the old Mohawk study. Um, it has some first-year emergency repair suggestions, right. uh, and for <clears throat> North Hadley Hall and the Russell School, it comes to fifteen thousand dollars. What are they? Uh, foundation probes, yeah. uh, telltale gauges, uh, temporary work on the west porch roof, and storm windows. Um, I think that we should spend the money and do that right away. On what building? Uh, on those well, buildings. Um, no sometimes even if you're selling a building, if you fix it up a little bit, you get more money for it. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, somebody might want to know that the building they're buying hasn't been rotted, rotted through because we didn't replace the window. They can check so I think, so I think area, we should the windows do that. have been changed. And then I think we should get back to the idea of the building committee because this problem is too big. Right. And if we could get a group of town people to become experts, uh, they could advise us what to do. And, and everybody um, else that wants to get involved can approach the board and when we put a committee together. I, I would I would really like that gentleman's idea. Let's start right from the basics and just uh, show hands of who would like a building committee and who would not. I would like it. Well, I think your questions are answered. It kind of gives you some direction. And who would not? Who would rather the board handle it? Um, I'm not opposed to a building committee. I know there's people more than qualified to do it in this town. But the reason why we went out and got this study here is because there are people who don't live in this town, don't have an emotional attachment to, uh, you know, this white building, that brown building, or anything else. Um, and if you put a committee together of people who live in this town, you might have that very situation repeat itself. Um, in which case, all you do is you waste a lot of time. There's, there's things that are critical as far as these buildings are concerned. Interest rates right now are very low. We have the ability to borrow money at a very low rate. Um, President Obama is going to be out of office soon and uh, interest rates are most likely going to go up. So if you're going to borrow money, you're going to think about doing it now. Um, so we really should be talking about the important issues of what space are we thinking about renovating. A building committee is fine, but you better have the right people doing it because we've had we've had the building inspector, we've had the electrical inspector, and they do a great job and they tell us they're like you got problems here, but. You shouldn't have your inspectors on the building committee because that's a conflict of interest. So be very careful who you put on the committee uh, to make these decisions. Otherwise, you potentially are going to waste a lot of time. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, what about the Mohawk emergency repairs? We are doing the emergency repairs now. Listen. No. Yeah. We could if we if we we got like four million dollars in emergency repairs in all of these buildings. We can do those right now, and you know what we'll have? We'll spend the money, and we'll be in the same situation. Why don't we set a plan and then move on that plan and spend the money and get something done? Margaret. Just listening, this is so complicated and complex. You have to have a building committee that has time to realistically go through all the options. I mean, we can talk about buying land and building a new building, but we have no idea what that costs or how we would fund it if the town could afford it. Um, we need to have all that information before you can make a wise decision. And I think the time is now to get a building committee that has time to devote just to that and giving us the options with all the financial considerations. You have to do exploring of how much land is um, to buy, how much it costs to build a new building compared to <coughs> renovating an old building. What are your sources of, um, of money? Um, one maybe has more uh, sources with grants and CPA than another. But otherwise, we don't even know what we're comparing what to. Exactly. Um, your, your point exactly. We've got est three estimates here from $2 million to $6 million just on that one building, and we still really don't know what we're talking about. Exactly. All kinds, all kinds of hands up. Is it Brian? I, yes. I think I tend to agree with Brian now. If I'm sitting at home TV watching this, it's been two years now, and half of the, everybody that's around town is watching this going, make a decision already. It's been it's been years and years of this, and countless studies, and countless estimates, and this and that. We got way too many Indians and not enough chiefs. I think just, again, 
get it, get a vote going, get some decision making done. I think that's what people really want. Gary? What you got to look at is we're not just talking about, tonight we're talking about these two buildings. We've also got the highway department, you've got the police station, public safety building, which is the newest one. That needs over a million dollars worth of work to bring it up to stuff. You've got, we've got to look at this whole picture. We can, everybody has a building they like, and we're not saying, it would be great to fix them all right up to the way they should be fixed, and we can use them for whatever we need to, and they're up to code. But to patch stuff up, it's just going to keep running around in circles. North Hadley Hall, the roof is, is bad. It's not as bad as, it's not the worst thing in the building. I mean, the heat on the first floor is running, well, the other day was running all day long just to try to keep it at 56 degrees. There's no insulation. They can't use the second floor. So if you put a roof on it, yeah, now it's not going to leak, but the building still cannot be used. We got to look at the, all the money you want to spend on everything now, and then pick. Do we want to? Which ones we're going to fix? We don't. I don't think we've got the money to fix all of them the way they should. And that's what we got to basically decide: is either you fix them the right way, or decide you're going to do something else with them. I, I don't think we could potentially fix every building and make them sound. I don't think. I don't think we have the use. 15 or 20 years from now for all these buildings. That's right, you don't have okay. it now. There, there's, there's one or two buildings that we do not need moving forward. Right. And the question is, do you spend the money on a building that you're not going to need 10 years from now? That makes no sense to me. I said it two years ago. I said, before you spend a dime on any one of these buildings, you better know what you're using it for because the price tag is so high, you don't want to do something and then turn around three years from now and fix it because as soon as you do that and they change the code, you're going through the whole building again. You're not talking about a renovation, you're talking about a one-time shot. You fix it all the way through, that way you don't keep bumping up against the code. We put a new, what was it, a new stove in here and ran into code issues. In dishwasher. Dishwasher, dishwasher too. And Gary will tell you the same things. Even if it's, you fixed it a year ago, if it's out of code, you got to rip it out and put it back in the code. So you're always chasing the code. And it's, it's a great state we live in, but sometimes the practicality does not work for, for municipalities, and it doesn't. So my whole contention is know what you're going to use the building for before you put millions of dollars into it. Prioritize the buildings. That's it. And I've sat here for two years and I've tried to move people on the select board to make a decision. They haven't done it. Um, some of them aren't here anymore. They, they couldn't make a decision. Um, we have the information. We've had the information. It's time for somebody to stand up and say, look, I think this is the best course of action, and let's move forward on it. Because, um, you know, if, if we, we bring in a building committee, if they're the right people, and it takes them a year and a half to get up to speed, that's another year and a half. You know, we we'll don't take that long. Out. I don't believe it'll take that long. Not, not no with the education we have and the people that are interested in it have been following it right along. I've been trying to get something done for a while. Yeah. Move the fire, decision build a new fire station. Will any buildings be brought before town meeting? What's that? Will any decision to sell town buildings be brought for a vote to town our meeting? Hope, our hope was... No. Well, he's the ballot. That are the... Yes. yes. Uh, we remember we talked about this as a board. We wanted to have these public forums on this building and present the plan. And if it was able to be done before town meeting, we would have a special meeting just on the buildings because there's so much for people to understand and potentially ask questions. You don't want to be doing this at an annual town meeting when you have 32 other articles dealing with town business. You have a special town meeting strictly on buildings and that's all you're dealing with. And purely out of time, there's no sense putting it on a spring or a fall town meeting. You'd have to have a separate town meeting for it. Uh, Mr. Eisen. the somebody mentioned emotional issues here, and I've 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 seen it or heard it already tonight. Somebody said that this building, even if it were renovated, is not good enough or won't be good enough for the people that are going to use it. But somebody else said, well, we can just rehab North Hadley Hall, and that'll be fine. 
So the, the issue becomes what value are we going to get for our money? That's right. Nobody wants, I don't think anybody in here wants to see any of these buildings torn down. But I agree 100% that if they were held privately, it not only would it bring money to the town for selling the buildings, it's going to eliminate the maintenance issues. Buildings of, of the nature that we're talking about, you don't rehab them today and then you have to deal with it again in 20 years. You're lucky if you don't have to deal with it again in 20 months. So it's a never-ending battle. And no matter how much money we sink into any of these buildings we're talking about, I don't think they're suitable for today's needs. You know, they were built 150 years ago. Life was different then than it is today. If the people that built them were here today, they would tell us we're out of our minds trying to rehab them, make it new. You know, I'm not suggesting we make the, the existing buildings new, but we need to have something that is appropriate for today's age. I heard an idea earlier from Mrs. Goldman that I never thought of. A new building that would have park and rec and a fire station. Somewhere close to North Hadley Center, but not in North Hadley Center. I think that's how the people like it. Um, that's, that was the point of this kind of meeting. Um, we had discussed quietly uh, for a long time whether we could do anything with North Hadley Hall. Nobody here wants to knock that particular building down, but uh, not when somebody wants to buy it. Not when, that's no. exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, I also heard that it's an overwhelming response here from building committee, but I agree with Brian, it'd have to be the right kind of people to move it forward and not just paddle the boat around in circles. So uh, I think uh, we're getting a lot done in this meeting. You probably aren't very patient with us, but uh, we're hearing your options and those are very important to us. Now, who else has something to say that hasn't been called on yet? Mr. Wiskevis. Yeah, um, I think I agree with a lot of what's being said here today. The uh, North Hadley Center has a look about it, it always has. I think if you knock that building down, you're going to be just left with a church and some older houses, and you've lost that village center feel. Um, so I wouldn't want to see it torn down. But I haven't heard anything compelling from this group today that indicates that people want to use the interior for any reason, um, other than just briefly mentioned. But none of the departments want to use it. So um, and if you think about it, there's really no parking there. You know, we have to park only in front of the building. You can't park in front of the fire station because the fire trucks need to get in and out of there. Um, I could see tearing down the fire station and making that parking, additional parking for the private use that would be going in there. And then creating a, a fire station somewhere in North Hadley, more modern, doesn't have to be that big, just house a couple of trucks, dispatch, doesn't have to be as big as what we currently have in center of town. Um, so that's covered. Um, you know, I was thinking that might be a nice place for apartments or maybe senior housing if that's another possibility. Um, you may even be able to utilize that garage for a couple You could do that. And another option possibly is if Park and Rec still want to be up there would be to tear down the garage and build an addition that would be suitable to them. That would be, you know, like a basketball court or two or whatever. The only thing is you still have the parking issue, so you'd have to work that out. Maybe that would, you know, deal with ball field would be a parking space or something like that. Uh, the other thing that was coming into my mind is I could see in the future having a senior center that would be tied to the park and rec because some of their uses could overlap. You have uh, exercise classes that go on here. For the seniors, Park and Rec could do similar. They already do up in North Hadley. You could share a gym space or whatever you want to call it, um, or multi-use space, basketball courts, whatever. I'm seniors, I'm sure like to you know, play basketball if they could and uh, you know, get on the court, wouldn't that be on a wheelchair or, or, or running around, who knows? You know, maybe when I'm at that point, I might want to do that, so. Um, but that means a new building. But I think that makes a lot of sense in terms of 
you know, what the needs are. I don't know what park and rec needs. I've never really talked to them about that. I've never not heard about it, but um, we should look at that kind of thing. But it seems to me that most people here are not willing to sink money into this building um, for our purposes at this point. I haven't heard anybody really saying, no, this is a mistake, or, or to go ahead and do it. I mean, so, I think, are you talking about I, I'm sorry, school uh, or North Adley North Adley North Adley Hall. Um, So I think we have pretty much have decided somewhat tonight, and we can ask the towns, the townspeople in a vote, um, that maybe this is one we can take off the table. Um, I'll just Sell it? Sell it. Sell it. I, I, I don't think yeah. we've decided that yeah. at all. No, we have No, I agree. I, I think agree with that. It's been decided, but I don't think we decided it. But, you know, I'm not hearing anybody else coming up with uses for it, that would make sense for us to put that kind of money into it. There is a more. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah. As you say, that uh, a compromise might be, um, you could sell the building, have the restrictions so the outside of the building is preserved, but also carve out um, possibly a, a, a public meeting space. Because I, I heard someone mention gathering, uh, so you might be able to. Uh, There's no parking. Right? Yeah, but you, you have a, you can carve out parking with the ball field. The ball field's not to be used for uh, playing baseball. So you could preserve uh, some a common area with some parking, and. Uh, and create a, a small uh, meeting area. Uh, anyhow, there's ways of selling it and putting all kinds of restrictions in there. So one of it could be uh, some form of a public use. All right, all the way in the back there. Um, I, I just needed to say that I, I've heard a lot of different things this, this evening, and I, I don't feel like there is sort of, uh, well, we're all saying this, or we're all saying that. I, I really just want to say that in response. I'm, I'm very things that, that I'm really struck by is the notion that in New England we abandon our historic buildings that are owned by towns to build modern structures. I, I don't know if that's a trend throughout all towns in New England. I would dare say it's not. So I, I'm really, I mean, I think in terms of the historic value of North Hadley Village Hall, I, I think there should be a, a committee that looks at the use of that, its historic preservation, the use of CPA funds, and other other means by which we can preserve that building for town use. Maybe not, uh, you know, as it is currently being used, but there might be some other use for that building that is that meets the need of North Hadley, that meets the need of historic uh, buildings in town. But there, there has to be some other means for that that building. <laughs> still preserve it and use it as a as a, a cornerstone as a part of our community. And secondly, I keep uh, what I'm hearing here this evening is we're talking about what our town needs in terms of um, uh, essential services, and then we're also talking about buildings. And I feel like they're almost two different committees, or they're two different things that somehow we're, we're trying to work them all together, like the, the, the price on, on North Hadley Village Hall, the $600 million, I think that's to build it, to get it back to code, to, to use it for specific needs rather than the building itself as a historic building. So I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of crosstalk that's not, we're not getting very far. I think you don't understand that once you touch a town, a public owned building, and you start to renovate it, you have to do it by code. <coughs> ADA, handicap accessible. If you want to keep that building as it is and in use for some reason, we're going to have to make it handicap accessible. It's going to have to have an elevator if you're going to use the second floor. There are just, you know, things that we have to do when we start on a building and renovate it for town use. So it's not like we don't want to keep the aesthetics of the building, but 
in essence, we have to pay prevailing wage to do it and to bring it up to code where a privately owned person doesn't have to. They'll pay much less in renovating that building than we would have to. Keep the exterior and intact. And keep the exterior intact and preserve for what it is for the North Hadley Center. Um, yeah. uh, one thing I wanted to ask is we, we talked about selling North Hadley Hall for condo development, but I don't know if our zoning even supports that. I've seen it done in Northampton and Williamsburg, but I don't know if you could do it under current zoning right now. So well, no, the house, we'd have the house to across the street is a rental house. Say? That's pre-existing. That's pre-existing. That's pre-existing. And, and that's a long process. If you want to change that, can of can of worms. How many apartments could they put into that? Um, no. And, and, and yeah. The other thing I and wanted to, to say, it's just something I, I think is important to think about. When we're thinking about buildings, future and current buildings, I think it's important with all the kind of weather events we've been having is to think which buildings can serve as emergency shelters. Because if there's a really bad event, I don't think we have enough um, emergency space in town. Uh, to answer your question right now, presently you said two apartments or condominiums in there right now. But that building would probably house six, six to eight. Six to eight. eight. Yeah. And we got the end of that, yeah. Okay. Okay. What if we sell this? Would we have to have an alternate building site in hand with the building up then sell it? Yeah. 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 There's, there's logistics. Logistics. Yeah. yeah. Because you have to put the fire trucks under a big tent. Right. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention that it always comes up with North Hadley Hall. Um, and I think it's important to come up a couple times tonight that um, making a building ADA compliant uh, addressing the accessibility things is CPA fundable. People might not realize that. Yeah, but there's also code issues. Once you spend X amount of dollars on a building, you trip the code, which says once you go over that threshold, you have to meet code on everything in the building. So when you think you're doing a renovation and you're going to spend $125,000 on this portion of the building, all of a sudden you trip the code, and that price tag goes from $125,000 to $1.2 million because you you trip that threshold, that's what you're up against with each one of these buildings. That's why I'm saying you have to know what you're going to use the building for. You have to have a use, and then you, you go through the building completely because you are going to trip the code on these buildings. North Hadley Hall is valued on the books, not very much. If you put $350,000 into the roof, you might trip the code, which means you're going through electrical, you're going through plumbing. By the time you get done with it, you might as well go through the whole building. So we're back to the $3 million price tag. And asbestos. And the asbestos. So what are we, you know, like I said, you got to know that first before you start that project. Okay, I've got a question from Mr. Kopecky. <laughs> so I get to, I get to talk to <laughs> Me first, for a You've heard all of this. You're the people that are in the building. What do you want? Well, I can just say up front that a few years ago, we had planned on potentially exploring the opportunity of putting in a spray park and making the, that nice green space next to us a community area. We're putting up a pavilion, some picnic tables, maybe a berm for an ice skating rink again. Um, but we stopped that plan because we heard of the concerns about the building. Since, since that time, which was five or six years ago now, uh, or maybe even farther, uh, we've been nearly closed down to, for safety regulations. We've been restricted in what we can do up there now because of safety regulations. Um, we're not able to bring in, run the pro uh, programs that we used to be able to do, so we're not able to bring in the revenue that we used to be able to do, which is actually hindering our ability to continue to offer programs to the community. Um, what we would like to do is something. Um, either, either fix it up, but if you ask me, we've talked about the opportunity of putting together not something that just park and rec needs, but a community center, something that would fulfill the needs of not only our department, but other departments, perhaps even serve as a voting location, a large hall. Uh, um, 
if we were to look at new construction, we were thinking of something that would go beyond just, I mean, I've heard it referenced a number of times, do something for park and rec. Well, we were looking at something a little bit bigger than just our needs, but for that for the community. And um, so, um, that's it. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're spitballing ideas out there, um, like Deerfield and the building that we're sitting in, one place that you can always pretty much get funding for is a new school. We're sitting in a new school. Park and Rec, I mean, uh, North Hadley Hall at one point was a new school. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've got funding for the new elementary school. It's a radical idea, but if you were to consider building some other school, um, like on New Hopkins, you could conceivably get much state money to pay for that. I know it's shocking and people would say no way, but if you're just throwing ideas out there, you could get you could get funding to build a new school and perhaps consolidate a lot of stuff right across the street. Just a few years ago, I was on the building committee for renovations to Hopkins Academy to add an addition for seventh and eighth grade. And uh, when we were down in Boston and sitting before the SBAB, they basically told us that the school was in too good condition and that um, we took too good care of our building, that uh, we weren't in line for that. So all the money that we got out of them that year was to put in boilers, windows, um, those kind of things. So um, it's hard getting money now from the state when things are in too disrepair. Unfortunately, the school took very good care of their buildings at that point. So. No, a lot, there's a lot of schools very soft. Very soft, yes. Right, sure. right. Kim? Uh, Again, uh, Andy's bringing up some good points. Uh, again, we need to go back to the fundamentals. Like, what are our needs? And, and could, could Park and Rec live with the seniors? Could that building, a building, work for both of them? And I think it can. I think there's some real huge benefits. And I think we got, again, we got to go back to the, the uh, the fundamental needs, what we want to do to give to people for different types of activities and, and look at what would be the best approach. And again, it might not fit within our buildings and then we make that decision. Do we want to build new to create this nice community center or can we do it utilizing what we have? And, and, and there's been a lot of talk about this building as being in the best shape and what we can do, and there's been talk about second floors and everything. And that was a, a viable alternative, but I'm very worried about talking to DRA, uh, the structural engineer, that, that we really need to have a good look at what this building is uh, structurally and if we can do it under code. Because, yeah, unfortunately code has changed. And one of the things is they're looking at making buildings safer for, for everybody to be in. And we've gone over the years with a lot of issues and nationwide that has tightened up the requirements for buildings. And one of the things is seismic. Seismic has changed dramatically. And it might not be something that we want to partake when we look at the expense, which I don't think the reports really have taken into serious account, is, it, is there an ability in this building to do that? Um, so those are the two things. Get down to the fundamentals on, on what we want to give to the people for, for um, different activities. See if we can combine some. And really, and, and the other thing that we've got to look at is this building possibly able to be uh, renovated. I, I, we spent a lot of time on North Hadley Hall. The other building, obviously, is this building that we'd like a little input on also. You know? I know we were kind of mixing them together, but is there any, any other ideas for this building that we're in right now? 
Johnny, you got you, you, you can't decide this building because you don't know who's going in there, what it's going to be used for. Uh, and I, I think right now, with the way we're talking, everybody's talking is about uh, moving the fire station upstairs. Maybe well, get a, speak up. We can't hear you. Uh, get a. <coughs> Uh, fire station up in North Hadley. The thing to do would be get a group now and do something and look at land. Look at places that's available. How much is it going to cost? How many acres is, uh, yeah. is, is there? You're talking about parking at the North Hadley Hall. Now, who owns that park? Does the town own all of that park or some of that park belong to USCO? We some don't know. Does. Some of it is, is town land, some of it isn't. So, you, you've got to look at that also. You've got to have enough land to do the job. But if you find a good piece of land up there in North Hadley, uh, then you can bring it back to the selectmen and say, hey, look at, uh, there's this piece of property, you know, it's 10 acres, it'll hold park and rec and the fire department, mm -hmm. all right? Or this one's only six acres and it'll only do the fire department. Exactly. But if you get somebody looking now, instead of waiting next, a year, a year and a half to come back with the whole shebang, then you're going to have to start searching all over again. And it's going to take that much longer if you can get the people to look at this and get some groups to give you people some information on the land that's available, exactly. how much it's going to cost. To then you can back people say, look at this, is two million. You need to start doing legwork right now. I, now's Absolutely. the time to start doing yeah. some legwork yeah. and, and find property. Approaching some of these landowners, uh, and I'm sure they're all watching tonight, and mm -hmm. of course that property in North Hadley just was way up. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, you know, there's a lot of great ideas here. That's that's what that's what we wanted. And they can that's also want it. And they can also look at a piece of property here in the center of town that if it's big enough, like Tim said, yeah. if you, you can get enough acreage right around here in the center of town, then you can build one brand new building and use these other buildings. Or you mean like uh, Willie? Would you suggest like uh, building a little park and rec in the center of town where they could access like maybe the library for function? Yeah. Oh yeah. Things yes, like that. definitely. Make Part of the use you, out of that one building, you know, have them have programs that can go to the library, definitely. or perhaps definitely can take land by eminent domain. Yeah, yeah. 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 So does yeah. This that, that, that's exactly right. You could do that. Buys. Golden Court. Frank Buys. Yeah. Golden Court. Golden Court is the back half of it. Goes up yeah. behind Wine Six. Uh, just you, you're asking about this building. This building has the most potential of anything that we're going to talk about, just Absolutely. because of all the land area that is around yes. it. Not only that is owned by the town, but as Joe pointed out, the abutting land that is currently vacant that has the potential to be acquired yes. and added to it. But we need to find out if yeah. right we can do something with this building based on seismic new code restrictions, and that's a huge question that has to be answered. And that's what the group that they, if they get a group together can look at this and could also look at a piece of property and, how, and a piece of property next door and start looking now and get some answers for the selectmen so that they can have that information in uh, six to eight months <laughs> instead of starting in a year and a half to do this. Tim, have you seen the drawings in the, in the study on this building from DR? Yes. Yep. What do you think of those? It's a good, it's it's a good start. Pretty close to what you got here. Yeah. Well, this would be just an addition at the end, correct? Yeah. Yes. But uh, but the structural engineer from DRA talked to me about it. Yeah. And uh, he is very worried about this part. The front part. The yeah. front part. We know this is blocked. It can be uh, changed structurally for seismic. It costs a lot of money to do it. But that that's that's not blocked. That's um, um, a whole different ball game. There's. It's brick with um, um, terracotta, with terracotta yeah. inside, and there's a real question: Is there a way of doing that? He said he did. I mean, it's a real issue. Put money into a building, and you might not be able to use half of it. Mm -hmm. right. uh, 
scheduled for the fire station and the uh, DVW? Not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. They want to build it brick. Not this wood one. 30 mile an hour wind. The siding's <coughs> The shingles are blowing up. You build a brick building, you can make it look architect just like the North Hadley Hall. They sell all that stuff for the trim and make it look really nice. Get that one. Get that one. Well. I think uh, nobody else has any. Oh, Mr. Nixon. Written comment. Go ahead. Uh, there's a written comment period for anybody who has a thought afterwards or didn't feel comfortable speaking tonight or wasn't able to be here but is watching this on TV. And the select board will be receiving comments up until January 21st. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming. And have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. What do you